Good morning. And welcome to worship on this Transfiguration Sunday. Uh, just a few announcements today. I'm going to start with this. On the back of the church, you'll see that it says Lent 2022. Uh, my wife is starting on the uh, on Ash Wednesday. We'll begin a series online. Uh, these are uh, 40 different names for God. You're welcome to this. If we run out of them in the back, please let us know. We will be more than glad to get a copy to you. However, if you want to read along, you can come up onto the Emmanuel Lutheran page on Facebook, and we'll pull that up. And I'm going to try to repost it as we go uh, through the email to those folks as well. Um, obviously, I survived ethics class. I have not a mirage. I really am here. Uh, very, very interesting class. A lot to focus on, a lot to bring home. So I'm very happy with that. And thank you for your prayers. Now, if you wonder in the back, why does John have the ULS uh, Latin calendar up? Well, I'm a calendar boy now. Not in that sense. And trust me, you don't want it. Uh, but this year, I was asked to participate in the ULS uh, Latin observance calendar. I was so proud of it and so blessed that I was put a part of this. I don't want to use the word proud, but I definitely want to show my church family that. So it is uh, attached to the board in the back. So that was kind of cool. <laughs> Are there any announcements from the from the crowd today? Anybody from the congregation? No, it's that quiet day. We welcome our visitors. Welcome. <laughs> oh yes, thank you, David. Um, Ash Wednesday service this Wednesday coming 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Um, it'll be a normal service, of course. We'll be distributing ashes. If anyone knows anybody that shut in, I will also be traveling on Wednesday during the day. Uh, we'll be doing ashes and communion out into our nursing homes and things as well. So if there's someone that I'm not sure I'm going to get to, like Linda, I want to talk to you about mom, about Lois. Um, but if there's someone that you may know that shut in that wants the ashes or would like community, please do let us know. And you can do that at any time, okay? So whether it be Ash Wednesday or just a normal time, if somebody needs a little bit of God's world and a little companionship and would like to come visit, I'd be glad to do so. Okay? Oh, thank you, guys. If it wasn't for these two, We'd all be wandering around. Um, coffee hour. Uh, I don't see Pam here with us today, but I do see Michelle. Yes. Is it possible the council has come to me and they've asked that question not next week but the week after? Make it the second Sunday of the month. Can we do that? Okay. So coffee hour. Time to sit and talk and chat with one another, have a little bit of coffee and some of the wonderful things that. These ladies bring in. Guys, we can bring stuff in too. Just saying. Anyway, um, so that'll be the second Sunday of the month. Is there anything else? Gentlemen? Okay, well, let us again welcome to worship today, welcome to our people online, and let us prepare ourselves for worship.
again. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Amen. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness. Let us confess our sin against God and one another. Eternal God, our Creator, in you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses, and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, we all to you, our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn today, praise to the Lord Almighty, number 858.
all of you. And also with you. Because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw 
almost as the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with him. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them a commandment, all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us sing Psalm 99.
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. seen the 
the light of God, God's presence in Moses' life changed him and how the world around him saw him. God's influence on Moses' life showed him. The fear showing when God saves him and saves him is in the tension with the God who by his all-powerful nature was frightening them. And frightened of the, they were frightened of the effect that he had had on Moses and so God, merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping his promise to the thousandth generation, but judgment down to the third and fourth generation. Moses is veiled, a reminder of the separation the Israelites had between them and God, and a reminder of how merciful, how gracious, yet terrifying and mighty is the Father. Yet in our second reading, Paul tells us because of Jesus, that veil has been removed. We try to put it there, but it's not there any longer because of Jesus' sacrifice. We now can rejoice and see the God who loves us, but we first have to remove the veil and not harden our minds and forget when we harden our minds the saving power of the Son of the Son that He gave us an atonement to the Father. Let's face it, folks, we're a, we're a society of appearances. Many years ago, as a corporate restaurant trainer, I, I was moved to a place and moved from place to place to troublesome or dying locations within the company I worked. A phone call would come, go wherever and see what's going on, weed out what needs weeding and fix it. Turn those bad numbers and bad service to good. And 90% of the time, the main issue was always people. Bad. Bad or poor service or poor representation of the company or product. Looking out. They were looking out for themselves. Their life. Or slipping through life and caring only for that, for person one. Not for the customer. I remember a particular incident in one store where the location was performing extremely bad. The sales had dropped and they were barely hanging on, meeting only the barest of expenses. I was moved at this location and had to move myself into a temporary apartment as we felt I'd be there for long term. It did end up a few years. So, putting things together, I packed up cat and crate, soup and suits and moved to the town where the store was located. Now, it wasn't the richest of area. In fact, it was the only restaurant for miles. Mm -hmm. Yet, they weren't busy, no customer. Because of the drive and the length to get there, I put the cat in the apartment and I ventured out to eat. Well, I'll go to my own restaurant. But I forgot something along the way. I forgot to change. In a rush, I stayed in the clothes I traveled in and moved crates in. All of him, hair messed up, clothes dusty. Look, <laughs> I look just ready to go out of the night on the town, right? And certainly not ready to step into my own store and say, Hi, I'm John, I'm here to help you with your image. But the answer came quickly of why they were suffering. As I waited at a host station to be seated, I was treated exactly how I looked poor shuttled and hungry. And they refused to see me. They ignored me. Sat the couple behind me, even after the couple said, well, he was here first. The quick ending of this story is that, well, I went home, back to the apartment, showered, shaved, dressed in work clothes in a suit, and went back to the restaurant. And guess who went from invisible to visible again? You can imagine the repercussion they had when they realized that I was still the same person that was standing there, the one they ignored. So like I said, we are a society of appearances. Too many times as a community, we welcome everyone except those people. And I don't even have to define who those people are because we know them, seeing their exclusion. But if you want to see 
see the face of God, much like Moses did. If you want to see that face and live, to see the change God's mercy and love can make on their faces and on your face, show His love. We are saved by sacrifice and the love of our Father and the sacrifice of His Son brought through the Holy Spirit because we do not have to worry about our saving. We are able, we are free to bring His love to the world and lighten the faces of those who need Him. I mean, really, can we see the love of God on our face? Does someone else see it? And I say yes. Yes, it can and it is. When we bring a smile or warmth or bring love, and I mean true love, not I love you, but I am here for you, I would die for you, love, to those who need it, when they see the love of God as their own, then yes, then we will see that smile, their smile as we come, the gladness of our presence in their love. When we visit those shut-ins, and we've seen this, the gladness of a loving and kind, kind face, voice brings them more joy than any treasure would. But like the restaurant example, who needs us more? Those who are longing for Christ's love through us? A single mom? The alcoholic? The homeless family? The person fighting addiction? They walk, talk, look, act, pray differently need differently than we do. But they need us. And they need us to do just the same. To walk, talk, look, act, and pray differently than we do. Will we deny God's love because they are not like us? Will we really put a dress code, a dollar limit, and a hygiene regimen on the kingdom of God? Because as children of Christ, if we avoid these children in our walk in the world, because of differences we put as important, ignoring their personhood because of condition, we surrender seeing the glow of the Father. We surrender that showing when the least are cared for. Moses glowed, or glowed, glowed due to the brilliant countenance of the Father, being with him, being a part of him, acting as his person, on the ground here in the world as Jesus taught us, we glow with his love. We are to share that light wherever we are and whenever we are needed. So the question now arises, are you a light to the feet of those God would have you serve? Are you a candle burning bright in the window of your life, letting others know God is home in you? And do you share that flame with others? You can have your home with them. This light can only grow if we share it. And not just me, and not just you, all of us. The darkness of sin and despair will only be driven out by His light. Our light. You know, one day I see it. One day I see when we are all called home to the Father. The light of Christ us home, blinding us and washing us clean in our sinfulness. And oh, how the future is bright. To claim that we are to take a phrase, the future is so bright, I'll make sure. You are his light. In your kindness, you blind those around you. Be his light. And you need to shine.
Let us join together in one voice our apostles' creed. I believe we are God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to the judge the living and the dead. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the community of the saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Fisher, John Wicket. Give patience to those waiting for answers. Grant hope to those who have reached illicit treatment. Give compassionate hearts to those who accompany loved ones through illness and uncertainty. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Today we shout hallelujah from the mountaintop. This week we are in the wilderness of Lent. Bless all who prepare and lead us in worship during this change of season. Pastors, deacons, musicians, and all who contribute to our worship life. God of grace, hear our prayer. Blessed are those who listen to Christ's voice in this life and now rest with him. Transform us from glory into glory and give us your peace that we do not lose heart. God of grace, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in this past week since we last gathered, our world has changed greatly. Be with the soldiers, with our soldiers, and with those folks here in the country. Grant us patience when tempers flare. Lord, we know that because of the conflict happening, in Europe and in Asia, the conflict happening with your Russia. That things in our lives may be influenced, but these things are material. Let us have patience 
and support as we go through this time. And let us be strengthened, knowing that your will will be done. God, our prayers. Hear our prayer. We also pray today for those that are involved in the conference. That they may be care, show care. That they can protect human life. That they may see the foolishness of what is going on. The cooler heads raised. We pray for the presidents of both of these countries. That you, Father, would have sent the Spirit there to guide them. And that a solution may be found.
by his blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in eternal life. Amen.
Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.